Morrison. In 1993, a serial rapist and murderer named Liddell Lee entered the home of Deborah Reese, a newlywed and a mother of a seven-year-old in Jacksonville, Arkansas. He beat her 36 times with a tire thumper, and then he finished the job by strangling her to death. Two years later, he was convicted by a jury and sentenced to death based on eyewitness testimony in his possession of her stolen property. After his arrest, he was also connected to other crimes, and he was convicted of two rapes, charged in two more rapes and another murder. The prosecutors decided against pursuing, pursuing that additional murder charge since he was already sentenced to death. After more than 20 years, including numerous frivolous appeals and motions for delay, Lee was finally brought to justice in 2017 when his death sentence was carried out with approval from the Supreme Court. You accused Arkansas of, quote, rushing through the execution, even though it had taken 20 years to that point, and you tried to get even more delay. And even after Lee was executed, you continued to try to cast doubt on his guilt with new DNA tests, which proved inconclusive. Do you believe that Liddell Lee committed the rapes and murders he was accused and convicted of committing. Thank you, Senator Cotton. Um, as you indicated, I uh, became co-counsel for Mr. Lee about two weeks prior to his execution at the request of some Arkansas attorneys who wanted me to evaluate a claim for DNA evidence that had never been litigated in the courts. Um, none of Mr. Lee's prior attorneys before his execution date was set had ever asked the court to allow post-conviction DNA testing, even though your home state has a law which provides for it. And in fact, one of Mr. Lee's attorneys uh, later admitted that he suffered from a serious alcohol and drug problem and did not provide Mr. Lee with the representation that he was constitutionally entitled to. Um, so I was involved simply in his request for DNA testing. As you know, we were unsuccessful. Um, after Mr. Lee was executed, uh, I became the lawyer along with several others for his surviving sister. Uh, who wanted to uncover the truth and see if her brother had been executed for a crime he didn't commit. As you indicated, um, we then went to court uh, and actually got the agreement of Jacksonville, Arkansas officials to test the DNA in that case. Some of the results were inconclusive, but notably there was male DNA on the murder weapon that did not come from Mr. Lee, which was the weapon that had been used to murder uh, Ms. Reese. Um, it does remain an open investigation, uh, and I continue to represent Mr. Lee's sister, so I'm afraid I cannot comment on the merits of the case, but, but that is the history in my So you said case. as recently as last May, nine months ago, that those DNA tests were incomplete and partial, as they had always been, and he was not convicted at any point on the basis of DNA evidence. He was convicted on the basis of eyewitness testimony and his possession of Ms. Reese's stolen property. So I will ask you again a simple question. Do you believe that Liddell Lee is guilty of the murder and the rapes he was convicted of. Um, Senator, you're correct. Um, incomplete and partial is, is different than inconclusive. They have pretty precise scientific meanings. I don't mean to mince words, but I've been trained by scientists, uh, as many lawyers are not, to um, be careful in the use of those terms. Um, I do continue to represent Mr. Lee's sister, and it would be, unfortunately, um, I, I cannot, in my role as an attorney, comment on the merits, and certainly on my former client's guilt or innocence, I can tell you that there is a, a significant amount of compelling evidence uh, in favor of his innocence. We would not have taken the case. Compelling if evidence that court somehow overlooked for 22 years until he was executed? Um, Senator, I have represented many individuals who were exonerated by DNA who lost dozens of appeals in courts uh, because DNA was not available and, and eyewitness identification, which you reference, is actually the single leading proven cause of wrongful conviction. So certainly some of those convictions are rightful ones, some are wrongful, and we have learned that it's through DNA Holly, that we can- Holly Lodge Meyer is the prosecuting attorney who tried this case. She was a prosecutor for 27 years. It was the only death penalty case she ever pursued because it was so heinous. Do you think she know, you know better than she does? about Liddell Lee's guilt or innocence? Uh, Senator, I, I, I'm sure that Ms. Lodge uh, worked very hard to pursue what she thought was a just result, as have many prosecutors uh, who, uh, through no fault of their own, ended up uh, wrongfully convicting innocent people. And I think what we can hope from our system is that all of us as human beings will take an open and fair look at the evidence, including new technology that was not available to Ms. Lodge. As he time. walked to the execution chamber on the night of his execution, he looked at the warden and smirked and said, 
this ain't happening, y'all are taking me back. Are you proud that you encourage such defiance in convicted murderers? Uh, Senator, I, I don't believe that anything in my career has ever encouraged uh, defiance or disrespect for the process, um, and I know that Mr. Lee maintained his actual innocence until his execution. Would you like to say anything today to Deborah Reese's family? Um, thank you, Senator, for that opportunity. Um, there is no question that Ms. Reese suffered a horrible death, uh, that no one in this world should suffer, and um, my heart goes out to her and her family for their loss, and um, I, I only hope that the right person was convicted and executed because the contrary is unimaginable. Anything you'd like to say to the three women who Liddell Lee raped? Uh, Senator, I can tell you that um, he did maintain his innocence of those offenses as well, and um, I certainly do not in any way intend to disrespect what they went through. I have known and worked with many survivors of sexual assault, um, some of whom are very dear to me, and um, what they went through is unimaginable, and I, I hope our justice system will always do what we can to get it right in those cases. Thank you, Senator.